Hello, in this short tutorial I'm going to explain how you can migrate the first-person story adventure template into your own project. For this purpose I'm going to create a new project based on the first-person template. Uh, I'm going to put it on my desktop. My project is okay. So just to simplify things I'm going to clean up uh, a few things here. Going to the first-person character blueprint and just remove the projectile things and the head mount display, the guns of this stuff that I don't want to have. Okay, so now with that out of the way, let's also get rid of this hard as well. Just so. Okay, so we have a very clean um, project here that we can now uh, migrate the project into. I do have the template files already here. I'm going to open this up and from here select the whole folder here, the story adventure template folder, right click and migrate. Hit OK. Select your own project, in this case my project, select content and select. We see content migration completed successfully. We minimize this, go back to our other project and we now see we have all the content here that we need. Now the next important thing is that we need our input mappings. Uh, for this I go over to the first person story adventure template, go to settings, project settings and hit input. You can now just check what you need and type it in manually into your project. You could also, and this is way easier, so I'm going to do this now, uh, export all your input mappings into a file and then into your in your other project just go to settings, project settings, input and we see here we have jump fire, reset VR and all of this stuff. And I'm going to hit import and select the exported file. And I'm, now I have all the input mappings that I need uh, with the correct bind key bindings to it. So I'm going to close this now. And the next thing is to go to blueprints from my story adventure templates and get a game controller into our main level. Now if I hit play, we don't have any issues. See the little dot at the middle of the screen that seems to be working fine. If I hit escape, we don't have any errors, so everything's okay. Now if I'm going to add some um, some blueprints to the level, I will have some issues still. If I'm going to examples, doors, uh, let's use the double swing door, place it here. This will work just fine. If I now um, wanted to place an object like the inspectable mock here. Okay, so I can ex inspect it, I can put it back, but if I decided to take it and open the inventory, we see we only have a black screen and we get a lot of errors. This is because our inventory, our journal, or the main menu are based on an external level. This level um, can be found here in Story Adventure Template, Maps, and Menu Scene. We need to add this level to our persistent one. So for this, I'm going to, to Windows, Levels, and select here on Levels, Add Existing. So I'm going to search it in the, in the content browser here, Story Adventure Template, Maps, Menu Scene, hit Open. And now I have this attached to my persistent level. If I zoom out a bit, you see that we have here a Menu Scene. Can I? We see here, this is uh, our menu scene is, uh, consists of a few walls and a pawn, a menu pawn, as well as a few target markers that will uh, be used to spawn items or inventory items at the correct place. So, okay, the thing is that we have this now in the center of our main level and we don't want it here. We want, to do, we want it to be somewhere we, did, we it's not interfering with our main level or any other structure. So let's select our menu scene, go to summon, level details here, this little button. And then make sure this is all like, like it's here, like and it's not initially loaded and it's also not initially visible because we don't want this to be. Um, and I would say let's make it for this purpose here, like minus 5000 on Z axis. And now we see it's over there and it's not interfering with anything so it can stay there. Okay, now one thing that I would like to show you is now with 
that done. Um, if I drag in something else, let's say uh, another door, I drag it over here, hit play, you'll notice uh, the door is not here. Uh, this is because if I open up my level, see here's the, the menu scene is still highlighted in blue. This means my current active level is the menu scene. So I ad just added the door to the menu scene and the menu scene is only loaded when we go to the menu. Um, to change this, uh, I could delete the door, select the persistent level as main level and then uh, drag it back in. I could also now hit a uh, persistent level with a double click. I think, yeah, enter does the same. So I could select the, the menu and hit enter persistent level. So just make sure it's highlighted in blue. And then I can right click on the door, select level and move selection to current level. So this way the door is now at the same place, but it's in the right level. If I now hit play, we see both doors are here. So, okay, just to make sure you have the right level selected. I can, we can close this now. And if I now go over to my mark, inspect it and put it into the inventory, I hit tab and there we go. There's the mark. So there's the journal, a menu, everything seems to be working fine. The one last thing that we need to do is uh, assign a, um, or game instance. Um, the game instance is important to be able to save and load your state. So for this, we go to project settings, maps and modes, scroll down, and here at the bottom, we see game instance, the default game instance, and we want to use our BP game instance. If you already have a known game instance, uh, please check the PDF documentation. Uh, there you can find the information that you need to transfer all the data from this game instance to your own. Okay. And that's basically it. Now you should be able to use all the uh, features of the of the first person story manager template. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or check the PDF documentation for further help.